All right, guys, welcome on in. Doing a video today on something that a lot of people have asked about, and that is my IRL setup. A lot of people are wondering how I can live stream from some of the places that I do, and we're gonna get down into the nitty gritty of the absolute best IRL backpack that you can get, mine. <laughs> Uh, all jokes aside, I do think that my backpack is unbelievably good. It's reliable. I've streamed in a lot of crazy places where even I was just like, uh, this is this is really cool that I'm able to to capture this not only on camera but live in front of my community for the the audience that's watching. And the way that I do that is through what people call an IRL or gun run backpack. There's a lot of pieces here, a lot of parts, and I'm gonna go through each of these thoroughly to, to hopefully explain why I choose these particular pieces and exactly what everything is. So let's go. All right, Ying, what do I start with? Battery. Battery, yeah. okay. Ying has, has, uh, has advised that we start with the battery. Now, the batteries are super important. They're the most important thing for me. I carry two of them or three, uh, depending on how long I want to go for. Normally, each of these batteries lasts about four hours, but it depends kind of uh, on your weather and your humidity and what exactly you're doing because you can sap battery power very quickly. I use these power add batteries. Most people use the super big Max Oak batteries, and I used to use that too. It's a really good battery has good power, can last you for hours upon hours and power everything in your bag. There's one drawback, well, there's a couple drawbacks, but the biggest drawback for me with the Max Oak is that it's actually over the, the international flight limit or any flight limit, actually. That battery is so big that I guess TSA considers it a bomb. I don't know, but you're not supposed to bring power packs on the plane that are that big. Now, some people, have reported that you can sneak by and some paces don't check. Well, I went a different route and I picked uh, batteries that were kind of not as big as capacity, but as, as big as you can get and also legally fly with. So I have these power add batteries. They're just below the legal limit, um, which hasn't stopped some, secure, some airport security officers from pulling me aside and being like, hey, what's up with these? You can tell that out of the one, like out of the huge list of non-flyable items, security guards have been definitely trained to look for large battery packs. Thankfully, whenever I get stopped, I can bust out my phone and be like, hey, this is what I bought. This is the Amazon listing. You can see right here that it's this many, that's this much, it's below the limit and please pass me along to my, uh, on my merry way so I can get to my flight. And uh, most security guards reluctantly say, oh, okay, yeah, you can get by this time. Don't worry about it. But don't bring that back on. Okay, guys, okay. Better than having to lie to security and say that it's a hard drive or something else, you know? I normally carry two or three when I stream, depending on how long I feel like I'm gonna go whether it's six hours or eight hours, if I think I'm gonna go 12 hours, then I definitely for sure carry three. I've had these for about a year and a half now. And I have noticed that uh, the power storage has dropped off a little bit. However, all this stuff works together, so I'm not sure if it's specifically the batteries that have dropped off or maybe other different areas that pull more power. So I'll get into that. Also, what you'll notice about a lot of this stuff is, before I get into any more pieces, Everything looks pretty scuffed. Scratches, dents, and I consider it kind of a, a badge of honor that my equipment looks like this. I've been to a lot of places. I've streamed in over 15 countries. We've been through rain and 110 degree weather, crazy humidity. This stuff has been with me all over and most of it is its original piece. Haven't really had that many replacements, so. If you think, Jay, what is this? It's all scuffed, this can't be the best setup ever. Well, that's because it's lasted, trust me. So now we'll talk about the LiveView Solo, which, what did they say back in the day? 
in biology class? The powerhouse of the cell? Well, maybe it's not the powerhouse. The nucleus? I don't know. I wasn't good at biology, but this is the thing that makes everything run. Everything comes into the live view and then it processes out and goes to your streaming platform or your cloud server of choice. The live view solo is the brains behind the entire operation. Without it, you are not going to the places I've been. First of all, it's a, a video encoder. This is what processes any HDMI signal, meaning you can stream from your Canon if it has an HDMI output, a GoPro if you have a media mod. There's so many different things that you can actually plug in to the live view. A phone, if you have the right connection, will also work. I've done it before. And you can take that signal and then send it to Twitch, send it to YouTube, send it to your cloud server so you never have to, you never have to go offline again if you don't want to. The other beautiful thing about this live view unit is probably the most important thing of the entire setup. It has 4G LTE bonding. What is that, Jay? Well, 4G LTE bonding is this crazy, crazy technology that allows you to use multiple SIM cards to push higher bandwidth for your stream. Now, most people recommend that at a 1080p, 60 frames per second stream, you're sitting at somewhere between 5,000, 6,000, even higher if you can push it that much to get the best picture quality as you stream. Normally, with one SIM card, it's not possible. There are certain places in the world where one SIM card, the provider will allow you to push 10,000 10, kbps if you want. But in a lot of places, you'll get capped out at two, three, four thousand, five thousand maybe, which is just short of pushing a 1080p stream in, in high quality. So what the live you can do with this 4G LTE bonding is take multiple SIM cards, put them together, funnel them, into to, to one super strong connection and then push that video to wherever you want to go. So the 4G LTE bonding and the video encoding on this thing is what makes it happen, what makes the stream happen. You can connect multiple different devices to this as far as the, the 4G SIM cards go. With this particular model, you cannot just slide SIM cards in, you'll need a, a 4G modem or a 4G router, and I have many here that I'm going to talk about probably next. Now, to follow up on the live view, I'm going to talk a little about, about the modems here. I actually have six modems on the table currently. I can only use, with the live view solo, four modems at a time. But the reason why I have multiple is because depending on where I travel, there's different bands that routers use. So you can purchase a router in America and it uses all the American, the typical American provider bands. But if you take, let's say, that American built router and then fly to France and you want to stream, you're going to probably run in to a little bit of trouble depending on the provider and depending on where you are. So it gets a little technical and I'm not going to get into that really, but just know that depending on the router that you buy, you might not have coverage for all SIM cards and all different areas. What I used to stream with before I ran into that problem, I didn't even know it was a thing. Everything that I have done has come from trial and error. So I, I, I had no clue that that was even a thing when I first started streaming. I knew a little bit about bands, but I didn't know that maybe my Netgear router would not have all the bands for an orange cell phone uh, SIM provider in France. So I used to carry four Netgear routers because they were considered uh, the top of the line as far as 4G LTE routers go. And I do think they are really good, especially when you get past the fact that they overheat quite often. Now I mentioned earlier that I thought that some of my, my batteries maybe had been pulling extra juice from somewhere and they don't have the, the same capacity as before, but I'm not sure. That's because my LiveView Solo does not have an internal battery. This LiveView Solo doesn't have any battery whatsoever, so in order to, for this LiveView Solo to function, it has to be connected directly in. You say, Jay, what happened 
to your live view and why does it do that? Well, I've put my live views through a lot, including insane heat. And I think after just using it and using it and using it, we got to a point where the battery was just done. Done battery. But I found that that was actually an advantage for me because it meant that the live view wasn't going to be overheating anymore. A lot of overheating problems come from internal batteries from devices. That's where the heat comes from. And now that my internal battery on the live view was no longer functioning, I noticed that I could put it in a microwave, and it, not a microwave, I could put it in an oven if I wanted to, and it would, we wouldn't have any problems with overheating, nothing like that. Just like in the live view solo, which is batterly, batter, batteryless, just like in the live view solo, which is batteryless, the best way to go about using these Netgear routers is to actually just pop off the back, take the, the battery out, and then use it like this. You can power it with an external battery. It will work just as well, and you won't have any overheating problems. You can see this one that I have right here is uh, definitely no battery attached, and that's how I like it. Now, with that being said, I have four other 4G LTE router slash modems here that are not Nighthawks. And that's because, like I told you, when I went to France, my Nighthawks didn't really work 100% of the time. I, I had no clue what was going on. Why, why weren't my routers working? I couldn't get good signal. I could put it in my phone. The signal was great. I could connect my phone into the live view as a modem and it was fine, but none of my Nighthawks worked. And I had found out that I just, these Nighthawks didn't have the bands that I needed to stream in other, other countries. So with, with that news and that knowledge, I knew that whenever I traveled, I would have to carry at least a couple of other different types instead of four Netgears. Four Netgear, was, four Netgear modems was putting me in a hole because I could travel to a place and not know if it worked. So if I kind of just switched everything up, didn't put my, all of my eggs in one basket, I could reliably stream wherever I was going. So what I did was I picked up some of these sweet, sweet Huawei modems. These are the Huawei 8372s. To be honest, these things have been money. They are small, they are cheap, they, they, they feel like they're gonna fall apart, but they've made it through so much. And they're really easy to install the SIM card and everything just works pretty much. I purchased these on, on Amazon, they came, I kind of was just like, this isn't going to work. And in the end, they ended up being so good. These were actually the two modems. I, instead of using four SIM cards while I was in Europe, I used just two and it was from these two modems and they, they carried me all the way throughout the entire trip. Since then, I've also purchased two other modems, which are these AT&T and Seagos. These things are just like, they're top of the line. They are slick. They, they cover most bases. I know pretty much that if these Nighthawks work somewhere else, then, then these ones will work, but they also have some additional bands. And if I can't use the Nighthawks, then I can try a combination of the Huawei's and, and these Insegos. These ones feel really sleek. They're super expensive for just USB kind of pop-in modems, but I think they're worth it for now. Here in Asia, uh, I'm in Vietnam right now, I actually just use the Netgear routers and the Huawei routers, and I always have full connection. The Insegos I've kind of just put back because I know that what I have works, and if I need these, I'll use them. If not, it's okay. So. All of these modems, they can connect to the live view. Two of them can be connected via USB. So that's normally my Huawei modems. They connect to these little USB L cables. It's got a female USB on, the, on one side and a male with a right angle on the other. And they connect very easily into this bad boy. Oh, other side. Boom. And you can do that for the other one as well. One of my Netgear modems also connects via LAN cable. So I have this sweet, very thin, short LAN cable, uh, and it's got the, the right angle on the end that connects into the live view. You just find the port, 
sneak it in, shh, 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 click, and you're good to go. And then the final 4G connection that can be put input into the live view is a Wi-Fi. So my third Netgear modem also has a Wi-Fi signal that I can connect to and that I connect the live view to. So you guys have seen pretty much all of the most important pieces, except for the bad boy that is the camera. Of course, you won't be able to watch the stream unless I'm filming it with something, right? And I use what is considered to be the best camera for IRL streaming. It's, a, it's an older camera. There hasn't really been any competition yet, or the competition that comes out just falls vastly short. And actually, just recently, these cameras stopped being produced. So there has been a grab for, for all, of, all of these cameras that you can find. It's the Sony Action Cam. It's the Sony AS300, which is what I use. It also has a 4K version. Uh, you can't really stream in 4K because we don't have the, the data volumes for that yet. And Twitch doesn't really accept 4K yet. Maybe in the future it'll be possible. So I, I use the Sony AS300 and not the FDRX 3000, I believe it's what it's called. I'm not sure. We'll double check that. And that's what it's called. I was right, or maybe I was wrong. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, the Sony AS300 is amazing for many reasons. Those important things are A, the stabilization. It has an internal digital stabilization system, so people aren't usually getting seasick if you're walking around or even if you're swinging the camera around. You could go for, a, I've seen people run a marathon with this camera live streamed, and although it wasn't the most pleasant thing to watch, it wasn't terrible. Also, this camera, for whatever reason, has the absolute best built-in microphone that you can imagine. It can pretty much catch everything. It's really good when you're in an urban environment and there's sounds going around all over the place and you can hear someone slamming their trash can or someone yelling across the street about something or maybe a motorcycle drives by. You get that ambiance, but also picking up the, the voice that's close to it. So it really gives a, a cool effect. I don't think anyone has really found any type of camera whose mic does such a good job in IRL situations. Now there are some drawbacks. It's not very good in low light, but there's not really an action cam that's good in low light. The sensor's not big enough. You need the big high quality camera to make that work. Hopefully one day we'll have an action cam that has an internal mic. It has amazing digital stabilization as well as really good sensor for, for low light situations. Now, this camera is connected via a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. And I do something interesting with my setup because mostly everyone has that cable and a power cable, which is USB uh, micro, a micro USB. And these have to go to the live view and an external battery to keep it pumping. Normally the internal battery on this thing lasts about an hour and a half in my experience. So not really getting you anywhere at all, to be honest. What I do with this bad boy is I loop it around on a cable management piece that hooks around the bottom. You can see that these two cables, they plug in on the back side. They loop around the front. I have it attached to my, uh, to the case. Well, I guess the, the, the casing of the, the camera and then it loops around underneath the body down onto this cable management piece. Now, most people have a really, really bad problem with uh, losing HDMI cables. I go through HDMI cables very rarely because these pieces, they don't move really at all. HDMI cables are notorious for being finicky. If you get a pinch somewhere, or if there's just one thing out of place, I don't even know how it works inside, one pin out of place, you'll get green, purple, pink flashes. And if you ever see that, you know 
you absolutely know that that's your HDMI cable and you need a new one. So I try to prevent that by making sure that these cables never move, they're locked in. So I can dangle it like this and not worry about anything happening, which is pretty nice. And then I found this cool solution while I was in Vietnam to, to kind of couple the two wires together because they're always next to each other. But this is a piece of pl tube plastic that when you heat it, it shrinks. It's like shrink wrap, kind of. I guess maybe it is a, a certain type of shrink wrap, but it's for electrical devices. And I just happen to use it. I put it on here and then use the lighter to, to shrink it in place. So they're very taut. They don't like this. This is the best solution I've found. I know I've seen some other ones that just, they're, they're good, but they're kind of sloppy. This is, this is the way to go if you ever want to do it. Jay, your Sony is black and white. It looks like it's wearing a tuxedo. What did you do? Well, I was able to find this pretty cool site that makes uh, custom made cases for the AS300. And I happen to get one of these things. I think they're 3D printed. And I, I, I think it looks so cool. So I, I bought one and this is, uh, this is how it goes. So that's the camera. I've always been looking into to different cameras and nothing ever pans out because this one, it just always takes the cake. Game streamers that are in a, a, a traditional setup in front of a desk and a computer, a lot of them use the newer models of the, the Sony, like the, the A6600 I know is popular because it has a really good depth of field. It looks so good. And I just haven't quite found anything that I am comfortable enough to take out into the field and do IRL. I think there's a, a few good options that have a lot of stabilization and maybe we'll try them sometime, I don't know. Okay, there's not much left. Just a few kind of cursory items here uh, and some stuff that I can touch on very quickly. Now, I, I showed you that I have six modems and I, I only carry on me uh, four at a time, but those modems need SIM cards to go inside them. And depending on where I am, sometimes I buy five, six, seven, eight, nine SIM cards so that I can quickly swap out, swap in data. And so I carry this really cool little metal container which holds my extra SIM cards. Can we uh, get a zoom in? So check this out. We've got all the SIM cards in here. It's just a nice little case that keeps everything together in the little pieces. So I always carry this thing with me. It's a really cool piece if you are juggling multiple SIM cards because SIM cards are one of the easiest things to lose, seriously. They, they are t small, slippery, they can hide in cracks. So picking this thing up has actually been a, a really a lifesaver. Uh, another lifesaver is Sometimes when you stream, you want to be hands-free because of the activity that you're performing, because you feel like it's safer, if maybe you're in somewhere more dangerous and you have an extra hand. I have, and I don't know, maybe I was the first person to ever use one of these, but this is a wristband strap where you can put your phone for chat now. You have to, you can be using all this equipment with your backpack, but in some way you're going to be have to you're gonna to have to have an extra phone or an extra way to be able to read what's happening um, from the users in your stream. All the viewers are gonna be talking, making comments, writing messages, spamming emotes, whatever they wanna do, but you're gonna to have to be able to read it. So depending on who you are, sometimes you put a strap around your neck and hang the phone from on your chest. Sometimes you hold it in your hand with a wrist strap, or sometimes you, take one of these bad boys and put it on your hand like this and you'll be able to read chat as you walk and still be a hundred percent okay. This is, this is a, a really good thing to carry with you because it can be a lifesaver whenever you get into a moment where you need two hands and you're streaming and you want to stay live, you put the camera on your shoulder, you go hard with one of these. Another very important piece. Now everybody has their different style of streaming. Some people, have the camera mounted on their shoulder and they don't do it any other way. They go through the entire stream 
don't see their face, only see their hands or who they're talking to. Some people go selfie stick only, where the camera is always facing the streamer. Now, I tend to try to strike a balance between what I use or really how I'm feeling. Sometimes I just don't want to be, I have my face on the camera a lot. You'll notice if you go back through the years of my stream, I've switched it up quite often on whether I've been a selfie stick streamer or a shoulder streamer. Also, I think some of the things that help with that decision are, you know, how safe do I feel? You, you're kind of, I feel a lot more vulnerable when you're looking at the camera like this the entire time and reading chat right here. So maybe if you're not in the safest of places, it's easier just to do the, the shoulder mounted cam. But I have this bad boy, so I can take, oh! Whoops. I can take, I can take my camera and slide it off from my shoulder mount and then just quickly, quickly with this snap mount, boom, I put it in and you're locked in for a selfie stick. Now these days, I typically will switch it to this when I sit down to eat or when there's a stable position to, to just sit the camera somewhere. Like we're not moving around, we're not going to be doing something for a while, I just, Boom, tripod, boom, off the shoulder, slide it in, woo, snap, crackle. Guess what? Another camera, 537 angles right here. Wait, I can turn you on and record. Still not recording, but boom. I think I can push this and now we are. Boom, and now I'm showing you what the camera looks like from the Sony AS300. Pretty wide angle lens, right? You guys can probably see all the trash on the ground behind me, but you know. Okay, that's, that, there we go. That's the point I'm trying to make. Pretty easy to, to swap in and out with this guy. This one that I use is really cool. It's the, the Benro MK10, uh, this model. And it's cool because it's made pretty much uh, pretty solidly out of metal and it can extend very, very, very far. So you've got, I don't know, two feet, two and a half feet here. I don't know exactly how, how high it is, but there's been plenty of times where I have utilized this. Um, if I'm in a crowd and I want to look over, I can go very, very, very high. This thing goes over my head and I'm holding it at my waist. So the only thing that limits me on how high I can go is the length of my cable from the camera to the backpack, but very, very convenient. Um, uh, one little hint on this bad boy is that it can be annoying because I, if you push this all the way down, normally the middle piece will go below the axis of the three feet. Can we get a, a close up on this? Normally, this will reach below and will cause balance issues. So what I've done is just like a, just put a little piece of tape around this area so it's blocked and it can't reach the, the, the ground all the way. And I find that this is good for keeping balance of the, the tripod. Quick tip. Actually, should I be giving out these tips? I guess we can. Well, I guess there's another important piece, which I haven't even really talked about, which is the backpack itself. And I have it here. It's not on the table yet, but this bad boy is a beast. This is not your typical IRO backpack. In fact, I haven't seen anyone use anything near as cool as this thing. It is completely mesh. Um, I actually got this from the gun run himself. He was asking me to test a lot of these products. In fact, this battery was a suggestion from him as well. He wanted me to test this bag out for use traveling and IRL to, to see how I liked it, to see how it went. And to be honest, this is the greatest bag that I have ever used. Uh, like I said, it's fully mesh except for the stiff back to give you some support. Um, there's a bunch of different pockets and, and yeah, it's, it's amazing. It, it actually fits all these pieces very well and I'm, I will include 
a shot of me holding the backpack, what it looks like inside. Uh, I have made a few little upgrades to this thing. And you can't really see any of them right here. Well, this one you can. I, we've added a kind of like a, an O strap here because this makes it so that I can easily put an umbrella and just hang it on the outside of the back. It's, a, a, it's really cool functionality. I can just thread it through here and hook it in the top one here and uh, it will just stay, no problems. Also, I like it a little bit more customized, so you guys are gonna need a close-up of this. If you look inside, I have made a few different additions, sewn in pockets. There's two pockets right here and there's two pockets in the back. Now, check this out. We've got our Nighthawk and you know I use two of them, right? Well, we can slide it right in and it fits absolutely perfectly. Snug as a bug in a rug and that's what it looks like. So these two go side by side. You can also put these bad boys in. Like I said, I normally carry a minimum of two. There's pockets on the back here. And guess what? They slide right in. Side by side here as well. So that's what I've done to kind of make the, the bag my own. But everything else is so cool. We've got this pocket, which normally houses the live view at the top. So it's constantly getting air. Boom. And all the wires can connect up through and hang down into the bag. Really clean and really awesome. Like I said, I'll get you guys a shot of, of how that looks afterwards. It's also got the, the good old side pockets. The only thing that I wish I had with this backpack was kind of uh, hip straps. I think hip straps would be a really good idea to add to an IRL backpack because sometimes you start carrying a lot of stuff and to get that support on your hips and off your lower back and your shoulders, it would be nice. Also, on this thing, you guys can, I talked about mounting on my shoulder earlier. I have the, the same mount that connects to the tripod. I have it connected to this shoulder mount as well. And so I can easily slide in and this is what it looks like. Boom. And then slide out, just takes a click and a slide. Boom. Okay. I'm making a mess of my table. I guess now we'll hit the extracurriculars. I said I was gonna do that before, but these ones are really the extracurriculars. One, one thing with streaming is you never know what's gonna happen. I spend a lot of time outdoors. 110 SPF sunscreen. How do you like that? You like that? Look at that. This is protecting me from everything. Sunburns, uh, radioactivity, Aliens, 110 SPF, come on. Uh, I also have this sweet, 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 uh, I guess we'll call it a rain jacket. This fits over my backpack if it's raining, boom, to protect all of my super valuable electronics. Now when I put this on, it creates a lot more heat and you can have some overheating issues. But normally if it's raining, you're either trying to find an indoor place to run to and you're live streaming with a backpack or you're just stopping the stream. So uh, this has been very, very valuable. And then, uh, of course, if everything goes wrong and for whatever reason your backpack is down and you can't do anything else, you have one final thing that you can do. You can stream from a cell phone. Streaming from a cell phone is freeing, honestly. It is. You don't have any wires. You don't have to have a huge backpack. Just there's some things that are not great about it. Most cell phones don't have stabilization. Uh, picture quality goes down. Connection, you only get one SIM card. Who knows how long that's gonna last. But if you can't stream with the backpack, just go with the cell phone, honestly. So I always have this bad boy with me. Uh, it's a two-in-one light and wide-angle lens. Just most people like the wide-angle lens view more than the, than the traditional zoomed in on the cell phone. So I always, always, always keep this with me. Sometimes I'll even decide that 
I get to a point, I don't think I'm going to move for a long time. I want to save battery on everything else. I would just stream from my cell phone because it's more freeing, less power. And if my connection's good enough, let's go. Let's do it. So yeah, this is kind of like the one of the extracurricular things that I think everybody should carry because you're always going to have your cell phone. You're going to have at least one cell phone reading chat and that's that. Okay. I can't think of really anything else. So I pretty much think we're, we're good. If you guys have any further questions or you want me to cover something else, I would be glad to, to do that. I'm going to do another video because I'm tending I'm, at the moment, I'm swapping between what I use. I'm getting older and I like a more hands-free setup, something that weighs a little less so my back isn't thrown out every stream. And I want to do another video on that setup as well. But this for sure is the main setup. It's super good, very reliable. And like I said, if you guys have any other questions on everything, let me know in the comments down below. Appreciate you guys for all being here. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps some of you or maybe spark some interest in the tech behind the stream. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to turn your alerts on. I will catch you all on the next video. Peace.